Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This video has been a long time coming. I have mentioned before on other social medias that I am dealing with mental health issues. Um, mostly depression and anxiety. There's four people living in this house and no one, it's never quiet. Um, but I've been wanting to make a video talking about that, especially recently because it's gotten to the point where I'm literally having mental breakdowns and panic attacks and slapping myself. Like the other day, I just slapped myself so hard my skin was turning red, I was getting bruised up and everything and I just really hated myself. <sighs> Sorry I look like a mess, it's like 9.30 at night and I'm trying to be a little quiet so my family doesn't really hear me. But this video is not going to be edited. I want it to just come out like nothing being cut. I want to try telling the whole extent of the story. My eyes keep like wandering around and I don't know why. <sighs> but anyway. With the anxiety, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder when I was in fifth grade, which is just, it's a very common anxiety disorder. It's where your anxiety is very easily triggered and everything. And I just so happen to have a long-term condition of it. Sometimes it's short-term, sometimes it's long-term, like lifelong as in long-term. So I've been dealing with that for like 12 years and it's just been getting worse to the point where I'm starting to develop panic attacks at work and When things happen, like things that can cause anxiousness and everything, my heart starts pounding. I get these weird sweats. I Every time I get anxious, I have this habit of rolling my sleeves up and kind of itching my skin. If you have anxiety, you know like that are rubbing my neck. I am growing up, a lot of people are like, Sarah, why is your neck always so red? And it's because I do this when I'm anxious and everything, which is a lot. So my neck is really red sometimes. And again, the anxiety has just gotten worse over the years. And I've been on and off with this, but I've been wearing this black rubber band because I like black. Black is one of my favorite colors, actually. Um, kind of have a cold, but like I stopped wearing one a while back because it got really stretched out and it fell off but because the anxiety and depression really came back full force recently i got a new one and i haven't taken it off in like a week and it's so like instead of punching myself 
like I'm anxious I kind of like play with it like like that because when I get anxious my hands need to do something so a lot of the times they're like doing that or scratching and everything and this just seems like not as bad so I do that when I'm anxious um And also, it's a, uh, it's what I feel is a good alternative to self-harm actually, cause like you're inflicting the pain by doing this. And everything, but it's not harmful at all. I'm gonna get so much comments of people being so pissed about that. Um, but yeah, the anxiety built up. I, for the past 12 years, I've been given several medications. I've been on so many different medications. They're like, Oh, your anxiety's not, it's just getting worse. We're gonna put you on another medication. We're gonna put you on another medication and everything. So that has been a yearly thing for me. If you notice in my videos that I kind of play with my hair, that's also one of my anxiety tics. Just who I am. But the anxiety has been building up for years and it reached an extent, you could say, when it was my junior year of high school and my grandma was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and you guys should know by now pancreatic cancer, very serious very low survival rates and and I that was also the same year I was starting to go through eating issues where I hated the way I look I thought that if I stopped eating, I would feel better. So, I would skip meals. I just found a sticky note. Um, I would skip meals. and only eat when my mom was around like at dinner time but other than that I would not eat breakfast, lunch, snack or anything and I did have a teacher who noticed that change in me and spoke up about it and I told her what was happening because apparently I was looking thin, like I was losing weight or something just from only eating one meal a day. And she got worried, but I told her and for the rest of the year, she kept an eye on me. And this was during the time when my grandma was having chemo and also during the time when they said we're stopping the chemo we're going to put her on hospice and then on June 14th 2015 she passed away at home surrounded by family um and 
I went to the wake, but I couldn't make it to the funeral because of finals. My anxiety wouldn't allow me to ask for a reschedule or anything telling, saying, oh, can I just take it at a later date or anything like my anxiety just wouldn't let me do that because I was anxious, I was sad. And so on the day of her funeral, I had to take a final exam. And that was also the day um, a lot of our family was gonna go back home after the funeral. So a lot of our family was leaving that day. So I didn't get to say goodbye. So it was just a hard day for me. And then kind of developed from there with the anxiety, the depression, the anxiousness with college and everything, and and then every single time things happen that I can't control, I'm like, it's my fault, it's my fault. Every time the littlest inconvenience happens, I'm like, oh, it's my fault, it's my fault, and I start hitting myself. Like, a lot of people think, like, self-harm is, like, just cutting yourself and stuff. But for me, I actually punch myself and hit myself. Like, I could suddenly have these thoughts that... Like, I could have these thoughts of that I'm so stupid. Why did I say that? Why would I do something so stupid? Why am I like this? Why do I ruin everything? And I would just slap my cheek like really hard or slap some part of my body, especially around my face, to To ease, I don't know, like, it's a way to say you deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve to be hit, and it's not fun, um, But I'm going to address what has been going on recently because I have told my followers on Instagram, on my Wattpad Promotionals Instagram account, um, because a lot of people, like, worry about me there, um, but I, I'm moving the thing that's holding up this. Um, but we recently had, um, just a family issue, you could say, where my grandfather fell. He's gonna be okay, he didn't break anything, but he did get a bruise on a bone, so they said it could take like six weeks to fully go away, so... We've been taking care of them and everything, and again, like, that day I had the biggest panic attack, like, this is all my fault, I, like, I just found some way to blame myself on it, and
and it's just been a very hard time like seeing him like this so and even before then my mental health wasn't the best so it was like this was the excuse for all of my fears and anxieties inside of me to break loose and just come out and everything because I've also been dealing with body dysphoria the the for quite a while now and I did tell my mom about it because I said like mom I don't feel comfortable having I told my mom, like, Mom, I don't feel comfortable in my body. Or thing. And she's like, well, do you not like being a girl? And I'm like, yeah, I like being a girl. But it's like some... I feel exposed, like vulnerable and everything. And I said that I was even thinking of binding myself. And she said, you know what, how about we try switching you over to just sports bras and see if that makes you feel any better. And if you still feel that way, we can find something to make you feel more comfortable. So I have to give her credit for that. So we switched over. So I've been wearing more sports bras. And they do actually help. I still have the dysphoria, but I'm, but I do feel a little more comfortable right now. Like I'm finally able to hide a bit. So going through all of that and then the depression on top of that and the anxiety I've just been going through a lot and I know a lot of people are probably like, oh, your situation, like some people have it way worse than you. Some people are actually hurting themselves and in mental hospitals because of stuff like this. You're, you're so selfish or whatever. Like I know there's going to be people like that and I'm just saying this is my story this is how I'm dealing with it this is my life we all have our own story to tell and this is mine I'm gonna be sharing this on one of my Instagrams where people actually do worry about me I'm gonna share this video over on there so they can know the full story. Like, I don't even know if I'm gonna watch this video over. Because I just hate the sound of my voice so much. Um. But. Now I'm gonna show you some things I. Like. Because you guys know I'm a writer. And a creative person and I actually have a bunch of notebooks and sketch pads right here that have a lot of things from these episodes of anxiety and depression I had and everything I don't know if I can show you this because it says this book belongs to Sarah Swartz and then it has my address but I don't live at that address anymore but I'm just gonna cover it up but the first page has a picture of Brandon Larisante the 
first one. And like I wrote this part in January 2017 saying my name is Sarah Teresa Swartz. I have a tw I have a sister named Christine and a dog named Walker. I am currently 20 years old and I attend SUNY Broom and I'm a Christian. A proud one. I've gone through troubles like everyone, but I always turn to God for guidance. If you know me, I am a strong Christian. And during all my troubles, I always have a way to turn over to God. And I don't know if I would even be here without that faith I have for him. So... I'm not sure what was going on in 2017 because I can't really remember, but in March 2017, I wrote, I'm finally starting to feel like me again. So, and I did this little sketch of a Rachel Joy Scott drawing. Um, pages that ripped out something like Lord give me strength I was ha this is I wrote this one during a time when I had very bad anxiety because my phone broke and it was making me anxious and worry bound and stuff I don't know why it just did. It, it was stupid, but... It did. This little poem right here was actually a feature that in one of my books. In April 2017, I wrote, I am so weak. Why can't I talk to people? Why do I have so much anxiety? That was because... I keep saying things that I instantly regret. New things, so. I always say things that I instantly regret and then I can't stop thinking about them and they just cause anxiousness and make me tear up and everything. I don't remember writing half this stuff. Yesterday, I went to Barnes & Noble. That sounds like me. I wrote this one because I felt like I needed to grow up like I was too immature. Even though I probably wasn't, I was probably more of a goofball. Um, I made a list of some favorite Pope Francis books. Or, not Pope Francis books, but quotes. I wrote top five things that are important to me, family, friends, God, my future, school. School doesn't matter anymore. I don't go to school anymore. So, with uh, another picture of Brandon Larisante in May 2017. This keeps falling out. My grandma actually gave me this notebook years ago a nice little thing called between god and me um i don't know if you guys can read that but no hate y'all um i made a list of what i like and what i don't like like what I like, family, God, friends, Duck Dynasty, Supernatural, my phone, church, Jesus Christ, music, pure flicks, Rachel Joy Scott, I'm not ashamed, country, angels, true crime, movies, theater, acting, keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> I was obsessed with keeping up with the Kardashians. So, love, Barack Obama, what I hate, haters, disrespect, politics, discrimination, bell porn. <laughs> I really don't like her, so. Pedophiles, probably spelt wrong. Cougars, mean people, racism, Donald Trump, hatred, 
stinky armpits, feet, breath, etc. Now that I have a job and I have to deal with so many different people every day, I understand that really, that is so true. I really do hate that stuff. <laughs> game Shakers. Yeah, I still hate Game Shakers because that show is so annoying. I know I'm like not their target audience being 24 years old, but still. The city, yeah, I'm not a city person. New kids shows. And I wrote, I drew that flower again, but I wrote this after the Weiss supermarket shooting in Pennsylvania, saying how we should end gun violence, because I'm very opposed to gun violence. And I actually work at a Weiss supermarket now. So, kind of weird to think about. Dear God, if I was to die today, what would be my cause? Would it be sickness or murder? That's kind of dark. What if I were to die today? What would my legacy be? Jeff Atkins deserved better. <laughs> I posted this sketch with the pictures on Instagram back in July 2017 and Brandon Larisante liked it. So, good things do happen. Um, these are people I pray for. I was praying for during the time, so this is the Jeremy Camp lyrics. <laughs> I wrote that summer of 2017. Like, I'm not ashamed. I will hold up high your name. I'm not ashamed. This is where my faith gets brave. Even if it costs me everything, I will stand and boldly say I am not ashamed. So... <laughs> Like, why is my life so difficult? This is about, like, my fear of dying and being forgotten and not finishing what I started. That's anxiety. Um, but a few days later, I wrote down a simple thing that says, Allow the Lord to guide you through all your struggles. I wrote down that. Then I wrote down a list of my inspirations, which is Pope Francis, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Jared Padalecki, Jesus Christ. Kindness is the easiest thing you'll ever have to do. You can't really see, and I don't, I don't really care. I am on the verge of a mental breakdown. I always felt compared, like people thought I was never good enough and everything, so I was just going through a hard time, I remember that. I wrote down, like, what I look for in a guy. I'm ugly and fat and no guy will ever love me. Yeah, I've always been extremely insecure in myself, and I still feel that way. Like, I'm not good enough, so. But I used to really feel it back then. Like, it used to be worse when I was in school. Now that I'm not in school, I'm more, like, sh like calm about it. My spring 2018... <laughs> schedule because I used to bring this notebook everywhere so I wrote down my class schedule okay hi I I got bored and drew an eyeball very poorly 
that's the end of that one. I need to stick that in. Let's go on to the first sketchbook. Um, Drew a Mermaid. Water floating out of the glass. Da 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 da. Another mermaid. I was obsessed with mermaids for a bit. Unfinished, but it's a mermaid tale. A blushing mermaid. Breathes in. Meep. I sent that to my friend and we laughed. So, a very poorly drawn octopus. Some little sketches I found on Google. I don't know. A beach or something. One Tree Hill reference. Basketball. This was eventually going to be something. I don't remember what. One Tree Hill reference. People always leave because they do. People always lie. One Tree Hill reference because they always do. I gave you my heart. Um, the pages are kind of stuck together right here. That's the page I was trying to find. It's just a square. Um, One Tree Hill reference again. I think that's cute. I'm going to try to find something that isn't complete trash. Um, I didn't even finish this one. Okay, that one must be more new. Um, my sister did that. She did all the glitter stuff. So, Jeff Atkins deserved better. <laughs> um... Jesus gave his life for me, so I'm going to give my life to him. Sarah loves Jesus. I wrote a Bible verse. That looks awful. Um, Jesus. I wrote, like, I find ways to turn to my faith, so... I thought this came out pretty good. Just a bunch of Christian content. Um, I tried that. Let me. These are pretty. Obama is my hero. So you can tell how old some of these are, but that's awful. That's awful. This is just a progression of how my eyes changed during a certain period of time. God, where the O is a flower. Um, Julian Wilson, because he's my favorite professional surfer, if you didn't know. Pikachu, because Pikachu's cute. Um, I was sad at the world, so I drew tears falling on the world and everything, so. I don't remember why I drew me, like, an eyeball bleeding tear, like, crying blood on a gravestone. I don't remember why I did that. Um, this was kind of, like, showing my emotions saying how long will it take for people to realize their words hurt and it has words like die ugly slut bitch we sketch our hatred on walls to hide like that type of stuff so hello x ryan i think that was when i first discovered him on youtube um what's up hannah 13 reasons why if you know um, more 13 reasons why. This was definitely drawn in 2017. 
You know, just a bunch of little doodles. One Tree Hill reference. Um, one Tree Hill. I don't know what that is. That was supposed to be a self-portrait. I look like a skater boy. When the stars go blue. I don't know. A wave washing up a heart. Um, sort of a thing, side profile of Lucas Scott. Um, Frosty the Snowman. Why am I showing you this? This is supposed to be a depressing video, so I'm going to just, like, that. I'm going to just go to all the depressing stuff because that's what you guys are here for. Like, I found one and then it disappeared. Yeah. People always change their minds. Never good enough. And it's like, someone saying, you're pretty, thank you. And then an hour later, they're like, you're stupid, fake, worthless. That's basically what it was. Um, go on to the next one. I have a cold, sorry. Um, kind of jumbled up thoughts like that. Don't leave, come back. Um, I just kind of drew this when I was having my, when I first started really focusing on my breathing issues and I was diagnosed with a form of asthma that apparently has gone undiagnosed for many years. Um, I can't even turn the pages. Mm -hmm. Is there anything sad in this? Not really. There's nothing really sad in this one that I did for my do that SpongeBob from that one episode though. Yeah, this is probably one of those sketchbooks where I did it when I was more happy. Um, this is also a journal I've been keeping where it just talks about like updates on my life. It starts off when I started really having the... Oh, my God, man. The breathing issues. I wrote this um, called post the lung test and I continued saying how I feel. And this is actually where I wrote the song that is featured in my book Unexpected. The song they sing at the talent show. This is where I first wrote it out of boredom. This is where I wrote how much I don't like Danielle Bergoldi. <laughs> this one I wrote more recently, so I'm going to read it to you guys because it's kind of depressing. The voices are louder than ever. The hurt, the pain, it's only getting worse. I can't breathe. I feel as if my whole body went dry. My ear waves my airways closing up. I'm curling in on myself, my hands covering my ears to lessen the sounds of the voices. 
nothing's working, I caused this, I'm crumbling to my feet, my head pounding as if it's being hit with a hammer. When will the pain end? When will I stop feeling this way? I need air, I need br to breathe, there, where's my oxygen, I can't catch my breath. That type of thing. And then four days later I wrote, things are looking up. Um, this is my prayer journal actually, so I've been writing in this for over a year. Um, well not over a year, only since February. Um, where I just talk to God. And it really helps, like, bringing him into this, so. And this is my sketchbook, my newest sketchbook, with an angelic rune just sprawled there. Big mess. Um, you have your own little world, um. I, like, that's another One Tree Hill reference. I can't draw a hand, so I was having trouble with that, so I never finished it. Yeah, but that one's not important either. But a lot of the times I just start sketching to make myself feel better. And the anxiety, it's still going on. It is progressing. But I am on medication. I am feeling better. And I really hope this video summed it up a little bit. <sighs> like I've just wanted to explain what was going on with my mental health. Which was more towards the beginning of this video, obviously, and then I kind of lost track in going down memory lane. But remember, take care of yourself. Be kind to others. You never know what other people are going through. Don't... Don't feel that you have to hurt yourself to feel better. There are other ways you can make yourself feel better, like talking to an adult you trust, a friend you trust, um, writing, like I write to God, I pray, because that makes me feel better. But if that's not really what you believe in, there are alternatives like jotting down your feelings. Um, I, for one, put my emotions into my writing sometimes. So, you guys are worth it. And, uh, and I'll probably make a video in the future showing, like, books that have helped me that have to do with mental health and coming to terms with yourself because you know I've been dealing with depression anxiety body dysphoria like all this stuff all at once and it has been stressful and overwhelming and I will totally recommend you guys some books one day with those types of topics but anyway thanks for watching if you stayed this long thank you if you didn't then thanks for at least clicking on it hope you guys have a good rest of your week and stay safe